as long as they have the common denominator, all you have to do is add their numerators. So that first one would be 4 over 12, which can be simplified. So that means we should simplify it. Both of the are divisible by 4, <coughs> so that simplifies to 1 third. Uh, for the other one, 7 minus 8 is negative 1. Okay, so we've got negative 1 9 for the other one. All right. So gonna... Okay, so just like with multiplying and dividing rational expressions, just like that is similar to multiplying and dividing fractions, the same thing applies here. We can add and subtract these rational expressions right now as long as they have a common denominator. Now, it is possible to do it without a common denominator, just like it's possible to add and subtract fractions without a common denominator. We won't get into that in this class. We can take this out and talk about it again. But right now, we're just going to deal with what if there's a common denominator. So just like with fractions, when there's a common denominator, we keep the denominator the same. We do not change the denominator. Okay, And then we combine like terms in the numerators. So we've got m plus m, so we have 2m. We've got negative n plus negative 3n, that's negative 4n. And then at the last step, just like with those fractions, thank you so much. Um, just like with those fractions, if we can simplify, we need to simplify. But remember, in order to simplify, you have to be able to factor something out. So in that numerator, we can take out a GCF of 2, and then we can simplify the 2 over the 6 to become 3 on the bottom. So we've got m minus 2n in the numerator over 3n in the denominator. We'll look at another one like this, but a subtraction problem. So we're going to subtract this time, so we have to be very careful with the subtraction. This is um, the most common mistakes we, I see are with the subtraction. So I'm actually going to take an extra step with this one just to make sure we don't make any mistakes. Um, I'm still going to pair together common terms, so x minus 5x. I'm going to write that first. Okay, I'm not going to try and do it in one step. I'm going to write that. I'm going to pair those together. And then we've got 5y. So 5y was positive. But it's minus positive y. Okay, that minus has to be applied to all the terms that follow it. So the 5x is negative. The y is negative. <coughs> I just paired together the, the common terms. So there was the x from the first one and the 5x from the second one. Yeah, I'm just pairing them together so we can see them better. So x minus 5x is negative 4x. 5y minus y is positive 4y. Now that numerator can be factored as well, but it doesn't do us any good because 4 over 15 is not going to reduce. So I'm just going to leave it in that form right there. Now you may see it written um, so that the leading term is not negative. They may reverse the order. They may put the 4y minus 4x just so that it doesn't lead with a negative. Um, but those are equivalent. I'm good with either one. They're the same. Um, it just, you have to write one less sign if you write it the, the second way. Okay, but they are equivalent. Okay, let's look at one that has a little bit more going on. Um, introduce the idea of a quadratic here. Okay, but still they have common denominators, so all we have to do is combine like terms. So p plus p is 2p. Negative 5 plus 2 is uh, negative 3. Now with these, um, well, we're okay here, all right. Um, the only way that we're going to be able to cancel something here is if there's a GCF, like with the previous problem, or if we can factor that denominator and one of its linear factors is the numerator, 
then we can simplify it. Now, just looking at it, I know that's not going to happen um, because there is no way for me to get 2p minus 3 out of that denominator right there because p squared is going to be p times p, so there's no way to get a 2p out of that. So I know that um, that's as far as we can take that problem. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that is as far as that one will go. Okay. Look at number four. Okay, same deal. This time there's a subtraction there. So we've got, um, let's see here, 4 minus 1. Okay, I'm pairing together the like terms. The first one had a constant, so I'm going to grab the constant from the second one. And then there's no m in the first one, so I just have to make sure that I apply that negative to that 5m in the second one. Okay. Okay, so 4 minus 1 is 3 minus 5m. Yes, we usually um, always write the variable expression first, but in this case, kind of like the last one, so that I don't have to write multiple signs there, I'm just going to leave it as 3 minus 5m. If, you, if that really bothers you and you want to write negative 5m plus 3, that is fine. Again, those are the same thing. No big deal um, if you feel more comfortable with that. But you will probably see this as an answer choice if it were multiple choice. Okay. Two more examples and then we'll let you work on this. All right. <clears throat> so this is an addition one. <coughs> so I'm just going to combine like terms. We've got, uh, that would be K plus 5 minus 1 is 4. Now, this time, I'm going to go ahead and factor that denominator because once I get k plus 4 and I look at my denominator, it looks like if I factor that, I may, you know, be able to come up with some common factors. And we do. Okay? k squared plus 7k plus 12 factors into k plus 4 times k plus 3. So we usually don't put parentheses around the numerator, but if it helps you see better, um, you can see that You've got k plus 4 in the top and the bottom. Okay, don't forget to put the 1 back in the place on the, in the numerator. Okay, so 1 over k plus 3 is the answer there. All right. Um, one more here. So this is another subtraction problem. We get... Um, x minus 3 minus 4, so that's x minus 7, over, um, I am going to factor that denominator just in case, because um, I'm not quite sure I see that there's a GCF of 2x squared. You kind of never know what will happen when you take that out. x squared minus x minus 2. Okay. Um, but that doesn't get us anywhere. There's no way that we can factor x squared minus x minus 2 and get x minus 7. Okay, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so that is as far as that problem will go. 